Private sector minimum wage raise approved. LEC hasn't filed tax returns in years. Man murdered over 120 Guyana dollars. And American inflation, is that a Guyanese problem? I'm Enrico Pulford, and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. The long overdue increase in the minimum wage for private sector workers to $60,000 from $44,200 has been approved and is expected to be instituted before December ends. At first, the private sector blamed the Rona for preventing them from being able to increase their employee salaries, but they finally agreed to do it in a staggered fashion. There has been no increase in the minimum wage of 44200 since 2017. The then Minister of Social Protection in 2017 increased the minimum wage up from $35,000. Yes, so in 2017, there were Guyanese working for less than 150 US dollars a month. It was then raised to 220 dollars after much fighting. Now the number is finally reaching less than 300 US. Progress. On Tuesday, the EU released an additional 7.5 million euros in budgetary support to Guyana. Between 2017 to today, in total, Guyana received 74.5 billion Guyana dollars under the Integrated Coastal Management Program. Guyana has built almost 10 kilometers of sea defense with the funds. There has also been the rehabilitation and maintenance of sea defenses across the country with said money. The Linden Electric Company has not filed a tax return in over eight years, according to the 2020 Auditor General's report. In fact, the company is in breach of a laundry list of financial regulations and laws as it was last audited in 2018, and the last time an audit was laid in the National Assembly was in 2013. While financial statements were received in 2019, none were received in 2020. Nevertheless, this information only came to light after the government installed a new board of directors in March of this year. Two governments came and went during this time, and no one noticed this until now. This is why you have to scrutinize your government, because sometimes they're too busy to even scrutinize themselves. On the topic of thievery in Linden, last night two gunmen robbed a businessman in Canvas City immediately after he returned home from a nearby wake house. Prior to the wake, he had closed up his shop at the Mackenzie Market. As such, the man was robbed of $200,000, all of his gold jewelry, and his cell phone before the men ran off. Now is the time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale is this 2011 Subaru Forester XT. It comes with all-wheel drive, driving modes, Bluetooth, mug rims, new tires, TV, CD, stereo, reverse camera, rear spoiler, and much, much more. Buy cash for $4.7 million. All paid down as low as $940,000 down, with around $106,500 monthly for four years, and it's yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit the showrooms that looked 171 Birochi, Queenstown, or Lot 2 La Margit, and tell America sent you for this sweet deal. Back to crime in London. One knife-wielding bandit was caught at a police roadblock in Mopalisa after robbing a businesswoman of her money, phone, and wedding ring. According to police, he robbed the woman at her home the minute she opened her front door. He threatened to kill her if she wouldn't give him more money after she already handed over her money and jewelry, so she ran from the home and summoned the police. He had fled, but was caught soon thereafter at said roadblock. A security guard employed with Amalgamated Security Services was arrested after he allegedly stole money from TSL and Massey stores in New Amsterdam. According to police, he was entrusted with $1.2 million, but when the police searched his house, they only found $485,000 of the missing money. This suspect remains in police custody. In a senseless display of violence, 27-year-old minibus tout Paul Jr. Lynch fatally stabbed 30-year-old bus conductor Morvin Nurse over 120 Guyana dollars during an argument. According to police, Nurse and Lynch started arguing over the money this morning at the Starbuck market. But after a while, the argument turned violent with them pelting each other with empty bottles and a brick, ending with the stabbing in broad daylight. The GPF has since issued a wanted bulletin for Lynch. You can move into your very own luxury home in 2022. Lynn Nora Estates West Coast Demerara Properties could have you saying goodbye to your landlord in no time. Call the WhatsApp 592-618-5702 and ask about in-house financing. It's now time for today's Runner Report. Today, the nation recorded 66 new cases. 
There are now 1,025 persons dead, 9 in the ICU, 735 in home isolation, and the total number of confirmed cases around the nation now stand at 38,684. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose in and off the mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds, and remember to give six feet of space between you and other. Now for the vaccines. To date, 407,341, or 79.4% of adults, have had their first dose of the vaccine, and 288,315, or 56.2%, are fully vaccinated. Unfortunately, they didn't give us the children's numbers for today, so sorry about that. Are you still using a Mongo Pal to buy choice, or you simply can't afford a new cell phone? Well, good news for you. Digital is slashing prices in half on the Samsung A3, the TL3 Pro and Pro Plus this Christmas. Upgrade to a brand new smartphone for just $9,750 at any cellular plus digital store. This offer includes a free one-month Prime Bundle Data Plan. Pro tip, smartphones make good presents. Now it's time for today's stupid news of the day. Do you know what I think is stupid? Just how unprepared this nation is for the massive inflation we are about to experience. Since the start of the pandemic, the United States' money supply has increased by 300% from $5 trillion to over $20 trillion. This has already hit the average American in the form of hyperinflation on the price of almost every consumer good, from food in the grocery store to the price of a home, even Bitcoin. All the markets and everything is going up in prices because of inflation. But right now, they are lying to people by telling them that inflation is temporary and this is just the result of such a good market. Come on. But honestly, that's just to ease the tip in so people won't realize when the money is completely devalued and everything comes crashing down. Now, here's the problem for us in Ghana, where we have pegged our dollar to theirs and we've just been so connected economically. In fact, the biggest part of this is the fact that we import 60% of our food, much of it from the US. This means that food prices here are going to skyrocket, and that's already in addition to the already increased prices we're already seeing. In fact, the price of goods from the US will skyrocket overall. Now, it could get even worse if the money becomes so devalued that we then have to adjust our exchange rate with the US dollar. If our money increases in value too much relative to the US dollar, then we run the risk of falling victim to the Dutch disease. Because remember, we just found this oil and we're supposed to be experiencing all this economic increase. So that really will be a problem. Now, if you don't know what the Dutch disease is by now, just look it up after this episode is done because I'm not going to exhaust you by explaining it here. Anyway, I could go on, but all I'm trying to say is that if things are so bad today that people are literally killing each other over 120 Guyana dollars, then what will they do when the mess really hits the van and the price of cooking oil reaches $20,000 a gallon at the market? I, I really feel like this government really should establish a task force of economists, the private sector, and civil society groups to have them figure out how do we realistically cushion the economic blow for us, all of the average Guyanese citizens, if the money-printing house of cards collapses in America. Because to watch things fall apart without even having a contingency plan is pretty stupid. Moving on to our uncut news, views poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your responses in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, how do you feel about the billions the government is requesting in supplementary funding? Should it be approved, or should it be scrutinized more? Adrian Truman said, you said it. It should go through, because of the many issues we have in Ghana, but they should make the spending available for scrutiny online. I am still waiting on my COVID relief check. No one came. This says a lot about these additional requests. Exactly. Just imagine how much money has already been wasted. It's terrible. And it's our money. RC View Farm says, The European Union just gave Ghana a good sum for new sluices and drainage. That's the most important issue at present. Yes, it is, and that's why we talked about it. And finally, Kamru Rahim says, The government does good. You say that is bad. I wonder what is good for you. Oh boy, it's you all with neoliberal economics. Listen here. All right, I'm, I'm just going to explain this once. What's good for me is prudent management of taxpayer money. Our money, yours and mine as taxpayers. I don't think it's good that they give you a dollar while they waste five. Wasteful spending is still wasteful spending. It doesn't matter how many nice handouts you give people in the process. Don't believe me? Ask your neighbors in Venezuela how they're doing right now. 
So, before we get to tonight's question, you there, Mr. Truckman, get all your high-quality truck parts at 5-15% to 15% off during the Christmas season. Nice up your truck and get it ready for work in 2022. Visit Powered Automotive Truck Spares and Engine Parts at 1161E Eccles. They are the biggest truck parts store in Ghana with a wide variety of parts and exceptional customer service. Call the WhatsApp 697-0171. So, for tonight's question, how do you feel about the minimum wage increase for the private sector? Is it good or is it not good enough? Think about that question to us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Paul Ford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here. Or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!